Takže vás tady vítám. Uh, the translation will be to Czech language, so the the main language of this session will be English, but we have uh, interpreters and uh, I hope that they they are able to to react also both sides to from Czech to English and from English to Czech. So we will see. You have the icon when you go down to the Zoom, you can see interpretation and you can change the language. The German is Czech. If you understand, we have no Czech choice, but you can choose Czech, uh, German, and this is, this is Czech, or you can use English. So it's, uh, and then you can uh, uh, tra uh, listen, translation or not. So it's up to you if you will use uh, interpretation, this icon. And also it's up to you if you will speak or not, but please don't speak. <laughs> Uh, later <clears throat> during uh, discussion. Firstly, we will present something and uh, after you can speak, you can use video and you, you have uh, all, you all have rights to, to join the debate. Uh, we are 70 participants here. So be, uh, be nice, be kind uh, and please uh, uh, try to use chat mainly because in chat uh, you can ask for something presenters you can ask for technical support in chat so use the chat and welcome and uh, i would like to uh, start with the first presentation and it's a little bit up to you uh, i i think the uh, the good start could be uh stanislav if if you agree stanislav uh so we can start with you because you are you are not first in program but you are from the czech republic <laughs> and then then we can move from the czech republic to to EAVG context and then to your guidance context because in the end of the session, we will have a presentation of some examples uh, from your guidance of the practice. So if you can start. Yeah, with... yeah, yeah. Thank you very much uh, just now, because I'm really uh, not so much literate in, uh, in, in IT. Uh, uh, so I, I would like to ask if you can see my presentation. Yes, just uh, yeah. start presentation od aktuálního snímku, na, tady yeah. kona, od, nahoře vlevo, od začátku, od, od, ještě níž, uh, níž. Ta, ano, ano. Já, yeah. a teďka, okay. teďka můžu... Ano. Já, yeah. yeah. so, uh, just uh, to, to introduce myself briefly, uh, uh, now in this last two years, I'm a researcher and, and uh, uh, at the Utah University Faculty of Education, Department of Psychology, and conducting the beginning of the uh, school closures of the pandemic. Uh, and uh, at the same time, in a parallel, I, uh, I am the member of the steering committee for education, SDG4, uh, UNESCO. Uh, and uh, I was till uh, till uh, this summer uh, the Czech member of the Educational Policy Committee, the OECD. So I, I was in contact. So I, I conducted uh, with my colleagues at the department uh, um, empirical research. You know, and, and I was uh, participating then uh, to in the the, the, the research, the uh, how to say. Uh, uh, gathering data from uh, different countries uh, uh, at the level of, of UNESCO or, or OECD. So, uh, first of all, I would like to, to divide the coronavirus pandemic will have a serious impact, it's true, uh, on the employment opportunities, uh, especially of young people. And uh, the desired response to, to this, uh, the situation requires requires, as you're saying, first, uh, the impact of school closures on education, uh, second, uh, anticipating changes in the world of work, and third, 
the implications uh, for preparing young people to the transition to the world of work and of course and for the work work of uh, career counters as well. So it uh, represents the three steps. I would like to, to mention to present a little bit during, the, during this, uh, this session. Uh, first, <clears throat> uh, what I call the, uh, the, in the time of coronavirus, between claims of catastrophes, and these are not claims of some profound people of, uh, uh, but but the the, the the director general of uh, United Nations, uh, Mr. Gutierrez, uh, uh, speaks about a generational catastrophe. And on the other side, the digital enthusiasm, I would say. On the other side, you know, now we can see that the education systems uh, uh, will change. And, and we uh, waited for it uh, during uh, decades, and and now is the the, the, the nice future, you know, uh, uh, ahead, and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, finally change uh, the education, which is supposed to be ineffective. Uh, with the, uh, based on the data on the responses of parents and uh, uh, teachers in Czech Republic, you know, uh, I presented uh, briefly uh, research in June. 2020 with uh, 5,200 uh, 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 respondents, uh, we can uh, sum up uh, uh, the, the results. So the first, and this is very interesting, that the knowledge loss is perhaps the most frightening. In our sample, 47% among the, 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 the parents expressed strong concerns about the academic future of their child after the first school closures. And I I had the data via UNESCO. In the UK or US, uh, the parents claim that this is what they are the most afraid uh, of after the fear of COVID. In 80 persons speak uh, about uh, you know the, this this academic future. Uh, what is it concretely? So they are afraid, and this, in my uh, opinion, it's very important for our reflection of the situation, even from the point of view of career counseling. The first loss of routine and the sense of discipline. Uh, second, the lack of structured activities. You know, it's it, it's, it's a little bit uh, you know chaotic and not uh, so well organized. And especially they stress the parents the stress the majority i would say 80 percent of our respondents ill time management third of course we are speaking about it the lack of peers of, uh, of the contact with teachers and the social contact at all uh, and we have mentioned that not only the contact with teachers but other uh, educational professions uh, as well uh, and, and and the last and the, this i would as a psychologist you know uh, educational psychologist I would, I would like to stress that the learning is not in a kind of Robinsonian uh, learning is not an isolated process. There is, this is the absence of social learning community and of comparative others, you know, that makes it difficult to deepen uh, self-knowledge. And this is one thing that she, which is underestimated, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a uh, writing about, about the coronavirus uh, impact. Uh, there are benefits, of course. Uh, the, the teachers and parents speaking about, about the career benefits, the new digital competencies of, of their child, they are, they are really astonished to see their children, how they are able to build what we psychologists call extended learning. So, uh, so going beyond the barriers of what is you know, prescribed and uh, searching and, and, and trying to, to combine you know, different sources of information. Uh, but what we have to stress these are uh, predominantly uh, the children living under what I call lucky uh, family conditions. So it means it with, with the, uh, you know, sociocultural, from the sociocultural advantage milieu, and the parents speak about increased students' autonomy and flexibility and so on. Uh, third thing I, I think very important, parents only realized in this situation how difficult the work of teachers was and became interested in the curriculum. It's, it's, it's new, the thing that never before parents were interested and in, in, in discussing 
concrete curriculum in the Czech Republic. I, I'm speaking about the Czech Republic. Uh, uh, teachers told us about uh, the constraint, concentrate on core subjects. And, and there was a question marks, you know, asked questioning uh, the usefulness of some parts of curriculum and uh, of some teaching methods they applied to for, for a very long time. And of course, benefits to students in expanding their learning time and learning opportunities beyond the, the walls of, of, of the school. Uh, but far from being uh, enthusiastic, we have to, to acknowledge that if we compare the voices of teachers and voices of parents, uh, we have to acknowledge that, that, that many benefits depend on parental engagement on the quality of school family communications. And this more than we were convinced before. Because if we asked uh, what was the, for not only the frequency, but the con uh, content of the com communication uh, of, of the families with, with, with schools. Uh, and so we, we have to say that, that the, 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 the role of parental competence, you know, and to be competent in, in these matters, uh, in these issues uh, it's it's not equally it's very uneven you know in, in our population and more than we were convinced before that means for example in our sample that there were not only 15 20 percent but but even more 30 one third or 40 percent of of parents declaring that they are incompetent to no, no, or not competent enough they're very you know, they aggregate aggregated uh, so uh, to in fact uh, uh, guide guide their child uh, in the way to understand and you know some contents of, of, of curriculum. Third, uh, second, teaching and learning methods, however innovative they can be, uh, not we cannot eliminate some preliminary and auxiliary procedures, what we call lower uh, of lower cognitive level. We are all in, in the media or in, in, in some writings uh, you know, uh, underestimating the lower cognitive level tasks. Like, like repetition, drill and practice, recognition and so on. And so the, the present, you know, the, 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 the attendance at school, school, uh, school uh, teaching uh, is, is a very good, uh, it's a very good setting uh, to in fact uh, practice this uh, kind of necessary lower cognitive level, uh, level, uh, level task. Uh, so uh, uh, slowly, slowly, uh, if, if we uh, say yes, now it's clear that in fact, we we have the new ways of teaching, uh, very innovative, very you know, uh, uh, feeding uh, creativity and so on and so on. So we have to, to be a, a, a little bit more, more careful. And the third, the curriculum. Curriculum cannot be reused mechanically. Simply eliminate its parts. Uh, perhaps we could. I, I would. I propose to, to to speak about new challenge. Uh, of course, illuminated by the learning at home. Uh, this is the curriculum sustainability, because uh, uh, I, I think this applies to the curriculum uh, influencing career choice and counseling. But uh, uh, we uh, uh, listen now to the uh, ministry and to other people, you know, in, especially in media, speaking about the necessary reduction of useless parts of the curriculum. But this is a very, very hard a very difficult uh, um, enterprise uh, about the world of work i don't know quite nothing so i i can, I can say uh, only that uh, to learn about the world of work which was a you know uh, recur very normal thing we are speaking about this since decades but uh, uh, now of course it's a, a very very difficult because the reality is fuzzy uh, fuzzy, we, we cannot see and uh, say what will be the future. We can only suppose that there will be general further development of uh, digital technologies and estimated to, to significantly change up to half of jobs. If I'm speaking in the five or four point uh, pandemic will accelerate probably the vanishing of, of a large number of professions and jobs, especially those requiring low level of uh, of qualifications, expertise, with the link to the automation and, and robotics and, and so on and so on, probably. Uh, but the professions change not only in, in terms of content, but also in terms of 
practices and ways are carried out. So we know the example of home office and, and so on. Uh, but but what I would like to, to, to stress is the psychologist. There, is, there will be much greater demands on autonomy, capacity for independent learning, uh, self-monitoring and uh, capacity to learn. And as we can see from the first you know, surveys and first research, these are the qualities that are most at risk from a home learning at the time of, uh, of the pandemic, because they depend heavily on family support. So speaking about the world of war, uh, uh, of course, the readiness for the retraining several times in a lifetime will be the key, the key requirement. And the last, I'm afraid that the, the, the marginalized populations will face unique issues in the area of career exploitation, exploration and planning. Uh, what we call a, a family-based guidance, for example, there will be great. Uh, and the last point, perhaps concerning, you know, the, the ch for, uh, challenge for, uh, for, uh, for educational professionals, what I would like to call is uh, that what UNESCO reports call the rule of three C. And in fact, the, the main challenge, in my opinion, is the collaborative change. So about the UNESCO reports, they stress the, 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 the growing importance of the rule of three C. So consult, coordinate, communicate. This is even more visible during the school closure. And the consequence that collaborative work of teachers with uh, teachers assistants, school psychologists, uh, special educationists, advisors, career counselors uh, should be, of course, uh, uh, conceived in a new new way and uh, should be strengthened. It's very uh, strange for uh, uh, many persons from other countries, uh, but in Czech Republic, uh, uh, we are the country uh, where the culture of school culture and the, 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 the culture of the pedagogical education mission is a very much you know isolated i will speak at the end of the lone riders so uh so it's, it's a new it's a, re a real challenge and, and for example in systems like uh, like like the school system in czech republic from the, the oecd reports we can speak about first the strong connections between education institutions and employers oh, uh, of course of course because you know if we proceed to some reduced uh, uh, curriculum. If we will be uh, in a re repeatedly, you know, I, but because I am very pessimistic, I think that we will leave some school closures even in the future. Uh, the vaccination is not for me the the the, the end of, uh, of of our problems. Uh, so uh, of course uh, the connection between the world of outside the school, even of uh, the, 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 the employers. It's really very, very important because, in fact, the, the, this is the, 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 the role of the lifelong learning of what I call the, the, the retraining and upskilling and re, uh, reskilling uh, task, you know, and duty divided more between schools and the world after the school and, and uh, you know, employers uh, as well. Second, providing well focused career guidance. This, this is, you know, this is my problem when we spoke with the, with the parents, uh, especially with this category of disadvantaged families. So, you, you know, the, the family-based guidance is, is absolutely, there is nothing, you know. So uh, it, it's, it's really absolutely, you know, the, the thing is to stay uh, uh, in schools, in education uh, very, for a very long time, some, and the other part is to, to, to ask, you know, for the uh, uh, unemployment subsidies or, 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 or stay uh, unemployed and the state will be here to, 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 to take care of you. So uh, uh, this is a, re a, a real problem for, for career counselors, career guidance, so how to, to provide the, the, the better focus, I would say, career guidance to these uh, families with low family guidance capacity or, or potential. And third, of course, uh, uh, remedial interventions to help to help people. We don't have any idea till now uh, <clears throat> what could be these uh, remedial interventions for uh, 
uh, for these young people uh, who, for example, have, you know, th th there are some gaps. Uh, for example, if you stay uh, more than uh, three, four months at home in very bad conditions for learning, uh, you can say that even uh, without the remedial intervention, you uh, will have, you know, the, the gap will be of, of perhaps one year or, or two years, three or four years later. So uh, it is a very dangerous trend and we have to, to, to reflect on the remedial uh, intervention. So the last, I, 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 for me, it's a really a new thing that the collaborative challenge for education professionals, this is the unsustainability of the concept of the teacher or of the career counselor as a lone rider. And there's a necessity to work with, with, with the uh, school psychologists even in a more intensive way than before. And, and to, to end, perhaps I would quote uh, one, this is one quote from an, uh, I, I, I think OECD, OECD report, the task is not to make the impossible possible, but to make the, the possible attainable. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I'm here to, to hear to your comments, questions, and, and so on. Oh, thank you very much, Stanislav. I'm lucky to, to have you here uh, because I remember that uh, as a Minister of Education, so you were in our conference also. Ah, so thank yeah. you when, when you were Minister of Education. So mm -hmm. it's nice to have you as a researcher here. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to ask Gerd, Gerd van Brussel if you... Yes. If you can start. I will first uh, share my presentation. Um, thank you. Yeah, there we are. A good afternoon to all. My name is, I repeat it once more. My name is Gert van Brussel. I'm president of the International Association for Educational Vocational Guidance. And I thank you for attending my brief talk. I will reflect on mainly on uh, the theme of this international conference and especially on uh, the topic that was discussed this morning by the panel. And I uh, will try to do that uh, from uh, an international perspective, as EAVG is obviously an international uh, global operating organization. Um, okay, um, the question this morning at the panel was, uh, what do we need? Uh, do we need to reinvent career guidance in this pan pandemic times? And in this upside down world. Uh, to give uh, some answers to this or some comments on this, we I think we should first see what we already have in our toolbox uh, as uh, career professionals, but also what we uh, in partic particular need uh, in these strange times. And I start with uh, 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 some personal experience um, gathered uh, deep back in the former century. This is not because I, I want to make clear that I have seen all and I have been everywhere. Of course not. But uh, what I, I experienced in the 80s uh, of the past century was an, uh, an economic crisis too but also a kind of a threat to our profession in the country where I live uh, in the Netherlands, because uh, our government in their uh, great wisdom decided to uh, cut the funding of career guidance. That was a real threat for all of us in our profession. And uh, well, they had the, the neoliberal idea that the market would solve all the problems and make it better world for career guidance. And yes, it, 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 some things improved because it stimulated innovation. And in my case, I must say, yes, uh, looking at the opportunities for myself as a young uh, career guidance counselor, 
I saw uh, chances to develop uh, services in the outplacement sector because there were massive layoffs and uh, unemployment like at the moment or what is threatening us, uh, mass uh, unemployment and outplacement and uh, replacement will be a service that we have in our toolbox, but what we will need much more and much more of our colleagues, practitioners, uh, I think should develop the special uh, competences in this outplacement and replacement trajectories. It's more complex and differentiated as a kind of service because it is, it's including career reorientation, label mark search, self-marketing and application, and settling in a new job or even in a new vocation, but also including moderating stress and negative emotions like depression. When you work with clients that uh, are laid off, they, in the first instance, most of them are a bit depressed or very angry on their um, uh, on their boss or their employer. So this is what we have, and perhaps what we should renovate, not reinvent, but renovate and make it more suitable for this specific time now. Of course, we uh, we also have all kind of models and methods focusing on um, developing uh, in our clients flexibility, resilience, and employability. We all know the work of Savikas, Hall, Bright, Grumbles, and others, uh, who gave us the right approaches for our clients to deal with uh, uh, unexpected um, uh, situations uh, affecting their career, their plans, it discounts for, for young people, for students, but also for uh, employees, uh, working people. We also in our toolbox have all kinds of online and distance tools for guidance. Of course we have, but what we see in this crisis that it, this crisis also pushes and will push even harder the development and the application of this specific methods with all its benefits, but also the downside of it. So we have to uh, fi will find a, a more, uh, the most effective way of, let's say, combining high tech and high touch approaches and high touch, not now, but let's say when we all have a vacation and can uh, uh, welcome our clients again, person to person. Um, this uh, specific time also uh, offers an opportunity for develop uh, a broader introduction of new technologies in guidance. I mentioned only mention gaming and virtual uh, reality as more possibilities. Um, the methods for supporting teleworkers, uh, what, that is what we need. Uh, it gave a boost to this kind of, let's say, new work arrangement, people working at home. I don't have to explain that. Most of us work from home. But uh, for some of us, uh, some people and also clients, this comes with depression and stress. Um, and even work disability as a consequence. Uh, so I think this is also a chance and a need for more collaboration of career practitioners with other HR professional um, and uh, employers uh, to develop strategies for prevention and uh, re remediation of this kind of, let's say, negative uh, emotional uh, aspects of uh, that are connected for some people with tailor work. Um, another thing, and there are a lot of more downsides, but what I picked out is that, let's say, um, the, the risk of group think and less creativity when we walk online, on distance, in groups. 
uh, there is a risk of, uh, of groupthink and less creativity. We all know this situation that we are with a group in a session, uh, Zooming or, or whatever uh, you apply or Teams, and that after 30 minutes or, or 40 minutes that you have the silent hope that it will end soon because everyone has to tell something and uh, or uh, the discussion is dominated by one or two persons in the and this is not helpful for creativity and uh, and also when uh, people think i hope this is over soon uh, this is not very beneficial for creativity and a good let's say group performance so we have to find strategies to uh, avoid this uh, downsides of working online with groups. Um, I think we all know the message, message that investing in career guidance uh, will prevent high costs on the longer term for education. We heard Stanislav um, and also for the cost of a mismatch on the labor market, a mismatch of qualities of people with the demands, the job demands. Uh, we all know this message, but now in this crisis situation, uh, sometimes people are more open for change or realize that we all have to change. And this could be the right moment to uh, send out these matches even louder and more frequently, uh, stimulating employability uh, that would result in a more sustainable and uh, let's say crisis proof that that sounds a bit like uh, a, a kind of a miracle but uh, crisis uh, resistant career development um i think uh although we we uh, always advocate collaboration uh, between association networks and practitioners, uh, educators, policymakers, etc. And there is a lot what already is happening. But I, I think we should in these times uh, look to each other and talk to each other even more and more. And also realize that uh, we have to broaden our field of expertise and competences. Um, talking about outplacement and dealing with, uh, let's say, negative emotions and what I, I mentioned as possible downsides of, uh, let's say, uh, distant work. Uh, it's important that we uh, look at the curriculum of uh, uh, the career guidance education and see what can we add to this to be more uh, adequate in operating in this kind of crisis because we have a crisis now but of course in the future there will be other crises hopefully not in this uh, uh, magnitude but um, we cannot we can expect that we will have more this kind of situation so uh, broaden and be flexible is uh, broaden our expertise and be flexible is is uh, a very important thing for our profession. And then I will uh, to to uh, end with uh, my my brief talk with some um, reflections on uh, the international perspective in particular. We all know there is a big gap between the haves and have nots in this world. And this pandemic makes it uh, and tends to makes it even uh, bigger, this gap, not only in the availability of, uh, let's say, healthcare and medicine and vision, but also in the consequences of this pandemic in economic and financial uh, aspects, but also uh, on education and uh, the work of world, the world of work. Um, so um, to, to prevent that the, this gap will come bigger and bigger, we have to advocate, uh, let's say, career guidance, especially also to those regions in the world that uh, don't have all the, the tools and possibilities 
uh, for guidance we have in the in the uh, mainly in the Western industrialized world. So um, we also should advocate for a more emancipatory career guidance that will contribute to decent work, but also to the autonomy. And that's a word I also heard uh, from Stanislav. Uh, autonomy of uh, workers and students in uh, managing and developing their career. Um, uh, we plea uh, also from EIFG that high developed uh, countries should share more intensively, even more than they do now with uh, low or very low developed countries and um, to be very generous uh, from that, to share no knowledge and know-how, uh, and not only uh, wait uh, till they are asked to do so or approached by an international organization, but also trying to be proactive in this sense. And then finally, our own association for uh, uh, education of vocational and career guidance. Uh, what did we do the last year? But well, we, well, we tried to do something that is we offered timely webinars uh, to um, members and non-members uh, addressing, let's say, the, uh, the specific problems uh, and consequences of COVID-19, but also um, uh, give some, um, some handles for working on distant uh, distant guidance and online tools and uh, in a few weeks we will present um, a webinar on uh, career guidance infused by hope. Uh, hope is something that's important in these times but it should be realistic of course and it should be connected uh, in our domain with career guidance and methods and instruments. Um, what we also did is uh, publishing articles in our outlets, our newsletter and international uh, journal. And we also were seeking more intensive collaboration with uh, our uh, other colleagues from other um, networks and associations. And we established one um, in concrete sense that is with the Euro Guidance Network. And we released, uh, to mention a last uh, thing, uh, a communique that is timely and relevant in these times, that is a lifelong education of vocational education for all and support for sustainable work in a turbulent environment. It was authored by one of our directors, Professor Jerome uh, Roger. So that, so far my talk, uh, it was perhaps a bit short. I don't know. I didn't mention, I didn't notice the time. But anyway, I thank you very much for your kind attention. And if you may have comments or questions, uh, we will come back later and are, and I'm of course happy to be, uh, to answer your questions and uh, I'm to be available for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gerd. Um, and uh, we are lucky to have you here also because you're, um, you are representative of so, such huge network. Uh, so thank you. And uh, you can use chat, of course, for to ask uh, get again. And uh, but we will move now to uh, use chat for questions, and we will move to uh, next presentation. The, uh, from the point of uh, Europe <laughs> and Euro Guidance Network. So I will ask Nina if you can start, Nina. Yes, thank you. I uh, have to look for my presentation. I thought I had it okay. on my laptop, but now I cannot find it just a moment. Okay, so if you have uh, any questions, uh, we can also use the time for the chat, so you can put to the chat questions. Thank you for them. 
And I think Nina, it's okay can you, now. Can you see it now? Yes. yes, perfect. And you can hear me as well, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, hello everyone. And uh, thank you also for me for inviting me to this very interesting conference. Um, my name is Nina Alros, and I work at the Swedish Council for Higher Education. There I am responsible for the Swedish Euro Guidance Center. And uh, currently I'm also the leader of the Euroguidance steering group. So I'm sort of speaking on behalf of the whole Euroguidance network here today. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know the Euroguidance network, uh, just say that it's an EU funded network uh, of national resource centers uh, for guidance exists in 34 countries in Europe. And uh, the main objective that has been given to us by the European Commission is that we should, it's during this uh, contract period that we are working in right now, is that we should be offering competence development of the guidance community on the European dimension in lifelong guidance. So therefore my presentation here today will concentrate on further training or competence development of guidance practitioners. And I think this conference is a very good example of how Euroguidance can facilitate this in different ways. Um, we have all heard about the rapid changes uh, that we are facing because of globalization and digitalization, uh, demographic changes, and of course now also this pandemic. And uh, all this puts uh, considerable pressure on guidance practitioners they need to adjust fast and they need to learn new skills and uh, maybe to rethink their roles as well. The recent EU study on lifelong guidance that was published earlier this year, uh, they concluded that uh, guidance has a key role to play in supporting citizens and workers, especially in this period of change, to ensure that they are aware of uh, opportunities available in new economic sectors and new jobs and activities and reskilling opportunities. And uh, this also needs, uh, leads to, to um, uh, need among guidance practitioners for a constant updating of their knowledge in order to be able to offer high quality guidance services to the clients. And we have seen throughout the conference that high quality guidance is needed because the demands on individuals are increasing very fast, both in terms of training requirements and degrees of specialization in the uh, labor market and so on. In Sweden, we also have very, very many new arrivals, both young people and adults from other countries, who in many cases don't have any idea how the national education system or labor market works. And our government is uh, now implemented several educational initiatives due to the Corona pandemic, which requires good access to guidance in order to be effective. Uh, so therefore we need guidance practitioners who have the strength and the competences to take on all these tasks. Uh, if we look at the descriptions of guidance systems that are available on, in Europe um, on, on the Euroguidance Network website, we can see that the initial training of guidance professionals differ a lot across the countries. In some cases, a degree in education is required, and in other cases, psychology is needed. Uh, in Sweden, we have a basic level academic degree in career guidance. So there are huge variations across Europe. But when it comes to further training after these initial studies, the situation seems to be more or less the same across countries. There is a lack of regular competence development for guidance practitioners. This is nothing I know for a fact, but it's a guess based on experience. Um, the National Union of Teachers in Sweden, they conclude in a report that those who are to provide guidance to others about studies and professions must have the opportunity to keep updated with the latest information about the labor market and the study parts. So they demand that the guidance practitioners opportunities for regular competence development should be guaranteed, which is currently not the case. 
I don't know how much research that has been done uh, on this aspect in different countries. Um, uh, the Swedish uh, Union for Teachers conducted a work environment survey uh, among guidance professionals. It was carried out in February and March this year, so before the full effect of Corona pandemic. And uh, the results are based on 731 responses. The majority of the results concern guidance practitioners in Swedish schools. And they say that only 37% of them say that they receive sufficient competence development. Uh, and then at the same time, 80% of those who have gone through some kind of further training state that it had a very positive effect on their guidance work. And uh, the three most common obstacles to further training were that it is too expensive or that they have lack of time due to regular work tasks, or that further training is not encouraged by the employer. So the conclusion from the union is that further training must be re rewarded in terms of salary and career by the employer if we want to strengthen the quality and make the profession more attractive. Uh, the further training opportunities that do exist are offered unregularly and uh, often in connection to certain projects on national level by professional organizations, by national authorities, uh, besides the main providers, which are the academic institutions, of course. Um, and one of the providers uh, in Europe is the Euro Guidance Network. So I want to end my presentation with uh, uh, showing a few examples of how we do it in our network. And uh, it's of course mostly done on distance in these Corona times. Um, a lot of webinars, we have been um, organizing a lot of webinars lately um, on different themes, uh, sometimes with the, uh, invited guests, for example, in cooperation with IAVG. Uh, and sometimes with our own experts. The latest one concerned how to develop guidance services through Erasmus Plus projects. Many Euro guidance centers also offer longer online courses for guidance professionals. For example, almost 500 guidance professionals have attended my distance course in mobility guidance in Sweden. And besides contributing to greater knowledge in this field, Participation in distance learning also gives experience in using digital tools, which is uh, something that several participants see the benefit of. And it seems that this is really a time for learning now during the Corona crisis because many professionals use, uh, um, engage in further training. I, I had to offer my course even three times this year because there was such a big interest. Uh, then we also offer, of course, other online resources like our newsletter with articles on developments in the guidance field all over Europe and um, digital publications of relevance to the guidance community. Uh, I already mentioned the EU guidance study that was published uh, earlier this year. And in this study, uh, expert emphasized the need for certain aspects of training for guidance practitioners to be strengthened. For example, the need for international exchange as part of lifelong guidance, uh, as part of training lifelong guidance practitioners. This is something that Gert also mentioned in his uh, presentation just now. Uh, and um, for Euroguidance part, we have already for years offered possibilities for guidance professionals to go abroad on study visits within the so-called academia program. Uh, where guidance practitioners can meet with colleagues from other countries and learn about guidance practices in the hosting countries. And uh, it's possible to see available training opportunities for the spring on the map on our website. And now also new formats of digital study visits are developed in different countries. Uh, the same goes for course for, for the European level and national conferences that we are offering. Uh, and uh, uh, like I said in the beginning, this, is a, this conference is a good example, I think, but uh, most events of course have to be digital now. And on our website, we have an events calendar uh, 
that uh, where, where we list uh, relevant events for guidance professionals. Many Euro guidance centers are also involved in arranging cross-border seminars. And just like with the conferences, they also bring together guidance practitioners, policymakers, experts from different European countries to exchange practices and innovative guidance methods. Uh, there was a, a virtual cross-border seminar held in September. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the theme was the voice of the client in career guidance. And the next one is uh, planned for November now uh, on tr transition as a process, the role of guidance. And it's possible to access uh, the results from all the previous cross-border seminars uh, on our website. Um, in, in this, this year, in 2020, we also undertook a survey at European level addressing our stakeholders, meaning career guidance practitioners and other professionals dealing with guidance and counseling. And we got 832 respon responses to an online questionnaire it was translated into 29 languages. And uh, on an aggregated level, we received very positive feedback. 93% uh, of the respondents said that they would recommend Euroguidance services to professionals for developing their knowledge and competences. And um, the result also shows consistent impact of Euroguidance services. 82% of the respondents consider the support that they have received from your guidance valuable or good, declaring that they have improved their knowledge and competencies and extended networking and collaboration. And then they also gave some um, valuable suggestions to be taken on board for designing future activities, like bigger focus on digital solutions, more sharing of innovative guidance methodologies and tools, and more information on learning opportunities abroad. So we think uh, further efforts are certainly needed to support guidance professionals in their very, very important uh, but difficult work. Uh, and we think that exchange between guidance professionals is definitely a very important uh, and, and uh, good asset. And I would also like to end my presentation by saying that guidance practitioners are very welcome to contact their national Euro guidance centers to see what there is on offer for them. So thank you. Thank you, Nina, very much. And as a part of Euro guidance work is uh, also in some countries, we are supporting exchange of good practice examples and to Today we have some guests from abroad, from Slovakia, Serbia, Latvia, and Hungary. And I hope you are here as a guest today with us. And uh, you are a good examples of practice from various European countries now. So we can look to the practice with through the Euro guidance and national guidance centers and to go to the short presentation from practices in Europe uh, and I would like to ask we can start with Slovakia if you are here um, because I have no um, special idea how to moderate these examples of practice so I would like to ask the Slovakia, Hungary, Latvia, and uh, Serbia, if you will, if you are uh, prepared for presentation. And so let's try to start with Slovakia, if you are here. Thank you. Thank you. Som tu. Um, neviem, či by ste ma mohli spraviť kohostom, aby som mohla sdielať prezentáciu. Mm -hmm. Tak když půjdete dolů, Není tam share screen, myší. Aha, už to mám, děkujem. A nabídne to vlastně obr okna. Mm. Uh -huh. Už byste mali vidět. Tak, já budu mluvit. jenom spustit ještě prezentaci od začátku vlevo nahoře PowerPoint. Ano, ano. 
So let's start. It was we, we spoke Czech and Slovak. No, now we uh, can uh, talk Slovak or English. How do you plan it? I will speak in Slovak. Tak já poprosím překladatelky, if you if you would like to uh, to use this translation interpretation icon, you you have to go down for for foreigners and to choose English, please, because it will be in a Slovak language and I hope it, it will be okay for all. <laughs> tak můžete začít. Let's, let's go. Ďakujem. Tak ja by som vám chcela predstaviť uh, tranzitný program zo školy do života. Uh, som z organizácie Alternatíva Centrum nezávislého života. A tento tranzitný program uh, má za úlohu podporovať, alebo snažíme sa podporovať mladých ľudí pri prechode zo školy do života, podporovať ich v tom nezávislom živote m, tak, ako je to možné. Našim cieľom je mladý človek, ktorý nás nepotrebuje, takže tak sa snažíme k tomu aj pristupovať, aby sme mu poskytovali vždy tú minimálnu mieru podpory, a, aby sme nerobili veci za neho. A pracujeme s mladými ľuďmi do 29 rokov, ktorí majú znevýhodenie zdravotné alebo sociálne. A také teoretické východiska, z ktorých vychádzame, to je prístup zameraný na riešenie, teda solution focus, focus approach, prístup orientovaný na človeka a koučovacie prístupy, napríklad Kids Skills, čo je koučovanie pre deti a mladých ľudí. No ako pracujeme, tam vidíte aj uh, dve fotky z našej práce, aj skupinovej, aj individuálnej. Mm, jedna z najdôležitejších vecí v našej práci je, že mladý človek je pre nás partnerom v tej spolupráci. Nie sme autoritou, ako je napríklad učiteľ alebo rodič. Uh, musím povedať, že nám to aj dosť uľahčuje, tú spoluprácu s mladými ľuďmi. Uh, snažíme sa zameriavať uh, s nimi na to, uh, čo funguje a na čo môžeme stavať, teda na čo si spoločne posvietime, to môžeme lepšie vidieť. Uh, poviem vám príklad, keď máme klienta mladého človeka z detského domova alebo s nejakým znevýhodnením uh, handicapom, ktoré, ktorý bol pre ňoho prekážkou v živote doterajšom, tak pokiaľ sa na tieto prekážky pozeráme, tak v tom duchu, um, v čom si silnejší, keď máš toto za sebou takúto skúsenosť, alebo uh, žiješ s týmto znevýhodnením už, ja neviem, 17 rokov. Snažíme sa teda uh, spoločne s uh, tým mladým človekom hľadať jeho zdroje, tie vnútorné, teda tie silné stránky, tu jeho jedinečnosť. A potom tie vonkajšie zdroje, to sú ľudia v jeho okolí, či už rodič, alebo um, kamaráti, uh, učitelia, alebo tá komunita, v ktorej sa nachádza, aby sa aj on uvedomoval, že kto ma môže podporiť na tej mojej ceste za tým, čo chcem. A čo je pre nás veľmi dôležité, je všímať si drobné zmeny. Uh, zmena, ktorá môže byť v, moj- v mojom pohľade drobnou, uh, môže byť veľmi veľkou zmenou, veľký, veľmi veľkým posunom v živote toho mladého človeka. A, a snažíme sa ich aj oslavovať spoločne s tým mladým človekom aby si bol vedomý toho, že aha, ja som spravil toto, vidia, už to môžem aj osláviť, hej, že nie som na, na tom cieli, ale podaril sa mi nejaký dôležitý krok na tej mojej ceste. A my u nás hovoríme v týme, že vedieme klientov o krok pozadu, pretože ten mladý človek je expert na svoj život. Ja neviem, čo je pre neho dobré, on tu vie oveľa lepšie ako ja. Ja som expertom na ten proces, na to, že mu môžem vytvoriť priestor, aby si našiel to, čo potrebuje, ale... Uh, on má svoje odpovede v sebe. A ďalšou vecou, čo využívame, keďže našimi klientmi sú často mladí ľudia s mentálnym postihnutím, a to je taká easy forma alebo také zjednodušovanie. Mám na to jeden príklad. Od kolegyne, keď robíme finančnú gramotnosť, ako môžeme vysvetliť hrubú a čistú mzdu, že aký je vlastne rozdiel v tom. Hej, že často hľadáme takéto praktické veci, aby sme im vysvetlili, že toto síce zarobíš, to máš na zmluve, ale toto dostaneš, hej? <laughs> Takže to, to sa snažíme aj, aby aj oni to takto pochopili prakticky. No, ďalšie naše aktivity, už som vám hovorila, že sa snažíme hľadať zdroje, je tu jedinečnosť mladého človeka, a pripravujeme ho na pohovor aj jedna z tých fotiek, ktoré tu máte, taká skupinová, tak to sú naši mladí, s ktorými spolupracujeme, keby boli v pozícii zamestnávateľov a Uh, tam som ja od chrbta bola, som uh, uchádzaš o prácu. Takže vyskúšame si s nimi aj takéto obratené role. 
A taktiež, keď tvoríme životopí, vzhľadom na to, že majú to znevýhodnenie, snažíme sa, aby uh, sa jednak učili hovoriť o tom znevýhodnení nie v zmysle, čo nemôžem, ale čo potrebujem, aby som to zvládol. Uh, že čo mi môže pomôcť tej práci. Pokiaľ majú záujem, tak ich aj sprevádzame na pohovoroch, aj spolupujeme so zamestnávateľom, aj v tej skúšobnej dobe. Vlastne sme taký prostredník medzi, medzi tým mladým človekom, ktorý sa pripravuje na prácu, nastupuje do práce a medzi tým zamestnávateľom. Robíme tiež tranzitné praxe. To je aktivita pre mladých ľudí z praktických stredných škôl, kde je to znevýhodnenie ťažšie. A, a títo mladí ľudia nemajú veľmi príležitosť v škole vyskúšať si praktické činnosti, ako je to napríklad na učilišťach. A preto sa im snažíme sprostredkovať tú skúsenosť na otvorenom trhu práce. Tam vidíte fotky, príklady tých našich tranzitných praxí. To je pre nich príležitosť jednak sa učiť nové veci, nielen k práci. A môže sa učiť aj ako si ako zaklepať uh, správne na dvere, keď sa chcem niečo opýtať kolegu, ako ho pozdraviť, ako si niečo vypýtať, ako povedať, že už som skončil svoju prácu. A uh, čo vnímame veľmi dôležité, je, že ten mladý človek uh, má často prvýkrát v živote možnosť cítiť sa užitočný uh, a má možnosť urobiť niečo uh, pre druhých ľudí. Viac k tej tranzitnej praxe by som vám chcela ukázať na videu, ktoré vytvorilo pre nás Združenie pre kariérové poradenstvo a rozvoj kariéry a ja sa budem modliť, aby, aby to teraz fungovalo aj so zvukom. Takže vám to pustím. Je to? Je? No, teď neslyšíme video. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Možná je dobrý přepnout znova, sdílet, jestli to vidíte v jiný obrazovce, tak to sdílet jako ruší sdílení a sdílet znova tu vibraci jinou, jinou obrazovku. Mm-hmm. So stop sharing and to share again, but another window in mm-hmm. the computer. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Děkujem pěkně. Sme nezisková organizácia Alternatíva Centrum nezávislého života. Okay. No, pracujeme nice. v rámci bansko kraja v troch okresoch bansko a Lučenec Brezno. Máme v organizácii jednak tranzitný program zo školy do života, kde pracujeme s mladými ľuďmi so znevýhodením zdravotným alebo sociálnym. Dôvodom začať vôbec realizovať tranzitný program bolo taká naša snaha začať tú spoluprácu s mladými ľuďmi ešte v čase, kým sú v systéme. Kým ešte dokážeme ich jednak tak nejak zachytiť, podporiť a začať ich pripravovať na ten dospelý život, keďže našim cieľom je podpora prechodu z toho školského prostredia do takého dospeláckého života. Týmto programom som vlastne prešla, keď som bola v druhom ročníku na strednej škole. Ono bolo veľmi náročné to obdobie, keď som odišla, keďže som nemala ani školu dorobenú, ani teda nič, nemala som v rukách nič. Mala som fakt v rukách, som mala proste 200 eur a chodiaži. Veľmi mi to pomohlo v tom, že som si dokázala uvedomiť, že dá sa to. Jediné, čo treba je chcieť a naozaj sa to dá. Takže som si dorobila školu, zamestnala sa. No a dnes si myslím, že už čo najhoršie je za nami, dúfam. Myslím si, že náš e, tranzitný program je vynimočný tým, že sa snažíme pristupovať ku klientom ako rovnocenný partner. Snažíme sa mu ukázať, že ty si môj partner v spolupráci. Ty si dokážeš zvoliť, čo je pre teba dobré. Ja ti v tomto verím a chcem ti vytvoriť priestor, aby si si to našiel. Myslím si, že výnimočný sme aj v tom, že tá podpora smerom k mladému človeku je vždy individuálna. Ani s jedným klientom za tie dva roky sme nerobili to isté. Každý potrebuje niečo iné, každý ovláda niečo iné a neovláda. Takže tak sa k nemu snažíme aj pristupovať. Našim ďalším plánom, keďže končíme vlastne o rok, v lete 2021, tak snažíme sa už teraz hľadať finančné zdroje, aby sme mohli pokračovať v tejto činnosti. Ukazuje sa nám to ako veľmi užitočné pre tých mladých ľudí, že nakoľko aj vďaka našej podpore sa zmení ich život alebo to smerovanie. Mojím odkazom pre karových poradcov na Slovensku je, že sa im chcem poďakovať za to, že veria svojim klientom, za to, že vytvárajú priestor pre nich, aby si prišli na to, v čom sú dobrí, v čom sú jedineční a posilňujú ich, podporujú ich v tom, aby si dôverovali 
a ďakujem aj za to, že sa ich nesnažia dať do tých škatuliek, ale dávajú im slobodu, aby si vybrali svoju vlastnú cestu. Lebo tak to robíme my a to nám funguje. Takže to bola ukážka z našej práce. Tam ste videli aj, ako funguje tranzitná prax v praxi. A ja si dovolím opäť zazdieľať tú prezentáciu, aby som sa dostala tak. Ja mám pre vás ešte zo pár príkladov z našej praxe. Máme tu príbeh mladej ženy 24-ročnej Janky, ktorá je na vozičku a zoznamili sme sa s ňou, začali sme spoluprácu s ňou v čase, kedy bola po škole už rok a nevedela sa zamestnať. Vyštudovala grafičku na strednej škole. Naša poradkyňa ju sprevádzala tým procesom hľadania práce, hľadania tých jej nejakých silných stránok, strojov, tej jedinečnosti a, a pomohlo sa, podarilo sa aj zamestnať v, v jednej chránenej dielni, kde robí, jednak aj pracuje v tej dielni s tými výrobkami, ale aj robí aj tú grafičk, prácu grafičky. Teda fotografuje výrobky, navrhuje výuborty a podobne. A taktiež absolvovala kurs s jednou grafičkou, to je tá fotka v dole aby sa ešte zlepšila v tom, čo ju zaujíma. Ďalšou našou klientkou je Mária z Banskej Bystrice, ktorá chodila na špeciálnu školu, vyrastala v detskom domove, začali sme s ňou spolupracovať v čase, kedy žila v, v takom útulku, ako obdobia krizového centra. A, a poradkyňa Lucka, ktorá je v pravodole s ňou na fotke, sprevádzala ju veľmi, tiež tak podrobne, tam išlo naozaj o tie drobné zmeny, a, a o to, aby sme ich zachytávali, aby ich poradkyňa s tou klientkou zachytávala, že čo už sa jej darí a ako sa posúva na tej ceste. A podarilo sa jej zamestnať v práčovni u nás v Detskej fakultnej nemocnici a tam išlo naozaj o také detaily, ktoré potrebovali sa doladiť, že kedy potrebujem vstať ráno, nakoľko si potrebujem nastaviť budík, aby som vôbec dokázala vstať a pripraviť sa do práce, čo všetko potrebujem si pripraviť do práce pracuje na 4 hodiny denne momentálne. A ďalšou uh, mladou ženou je Monika, ktorá, uh, praco- teda, ktorá vyštudovala špeciálne, teda odborné učilište, špeciálnu školu a bola z detského domova. Uh, v rámci našej spolupráce sa presťahovala do druhého mesta, kde tiež pôsobíme a začala pracovať ako opatrovateľka v uh, domove dôchodcov. Uh, viem, že toho je tu viac toho textu, ale dala som aspoň zo pár príkladov spätnej väzby od našich klientov, teda od mladých ľudí, s ktorými robíme aj uh, od ich rodičov. Uh, ďakujeme, že ste nám pomohli nájsť pre uh, Janku prácu. Veľmi si to vážime. Robíte dobrú prácu. Je to radosť vidieť, ako sa Janke plňa smia, ako môže rád. Uh, druhý, druhý príklad je z tej tranzitnej praxe. Od, od matky našej klientky. Dobrý deň, cera už doma. Je neskutočne šťastná a spokojná. Ďakujem vám za príležitosť brávať ju medzi ľudí. Tie tranzitné praxe, to je tiež príležitosť, aby títo mladí ľudia, ktorí sú často pomerne izolovaní od tej spoločnosti, aby sa dostali medzi bežných ľudí, pretože sú často v škole a s rodičmi a málo kedy sa dostanú do toho bežného života, tak ako máme možnosť my. A potom tu mám ďalší príklad tiež z tranzitnej praxe. Viem už žehliť, utierať stoly, som dostala. To je naša klientka, ktorá absolvovala tiež tranzitnú prax aj v kuchyni. A pre ňu to bolo také znamenie, že keď môže toto robiť, tieto pre nás jednoduché veci, tak to znamená, že už, už patrí medzi dospelákov, že už nie je dieťa. Tam sa pr- pracovalo aj s rodičmi, že čo to pre nich znamená, že ich dcéra toto dokáže a čo to znamená pre jej ďalší život a pre ich ďalšie spolužitie. No a pre krátkosť ešte uvediem tú poslednú uh, spätnú väzbu. Ďakujem vám za všetko, čo pre Sany robíte. Má to pre ňu zmysel. Začala viac rozprávať, chce písať a čítať. Veľmi sa snaží. Ďakujem ešte raz. Snažíme sa zbierať tieto konkrétne uh, spätné väzby od, od ľudí, s ktorými spolupracujeme, teda nielen s klientmi, ale aj s ich uh, podporúcimi osobami, ako ich voláme, keďže sa snažíme spolupracovať so systémom toho mladého človeka 
a aby sme vedeli, či tá naša služba, či tá naša podpora je užitočná. A môžete si nás pozrieť aj na Facebooku, kde dávame pravidelne uh, jednak to, čo robíme s klientmi, aj ukážky našej práce. Máme taký Facebookový seriál o, o rôznych technikách, metódach, ktoré používame aj v čase online. <laughs> sme sa veľa naučili aj naši klienti. A tu môžete na tom obrázku vidieť cestu, uh, ktorá znázorňuje mladý človek a za ním kráča ten pracovník a mladý človek si to vedie po tej cestičke, kde môžu byť, čo len chce a na, na tom konci žiť samostatne alebo aspoň, aspoň tak samostatne, ako, ako ja dokážem. No a týmto by som sa vám chcela poďakovať. To je fotka celého nášho týmu v tranzitnom programe. A ďakujem vám za pozornosť. Prípadne, ak by ste mali otázky, tak rada zodpoviem. Já moc děkuju. Thank you very much. A já jsem rád, že jsme tady měli příklad dobré praxe ze Slovenska. A určitě je to skvělé, když konference už přechází do toho, do tady toho konkrétního tématu, jako je právě vaše praxe. Takže určitě si myslím, že mnoho účastníků na tohle právě čekalo a teď jsou spokojení, že to vidí a děkujeme. A pojďme dál. Pojďme dál. Máme jenom už vlastně 30 minut akorát si myslím dokonce na tři příklady. Doufám, že se nám podaří vidět ještě Srbsko, Maďarsko a, a Lotyšsko. Tak pojďme třeba, jestli můžu požádat Srbsko a to znamená, if, if I could ask to, to present now Ružica from Serbia. Like, ne like next example of practices from Serbia. Yes, hello. Okay, um, hello. I think you can hear me well. Yes. Okay, and I assume that you see the presentation also. Let me just play it. So I think we are all fine. <laughs> all is fine, right? Okay. So uh, the National Career Guidance Award in Serbia this year was the fifth one. And as we mentioned, the aim of this uh, initiative is to promote organization and individuals and um, actually to give them opportunity to brag about their uh, services, tools or methods. Uh, the competition is open for any field of career guidance, meaning people from education, youth work, employment services, commercial career guidance uh, activities could apply. Uh, this year we have different, uh, 19 different applications. And uh, as in the previous year, we have some certain criteria that, uh, you know, we go when we try to check and decide who will be the best one this year. Uh, these criteria are regarding the effects. So we are looking for, we are looking uh, for um, actually how this activity tool or, or service uh, helps someone to develop their career management skills. Also how everything is connected to the need of the target group. There, where is the connection between the activity and the need and uh, how, how it is planned to have a good quality of the practice in the following period. And also since this is a joint cooperation, one criteria is very important for us and that is how that can be implemented anywhere else in the Europe. And the commission, the selecting committee has a difficult job every year because they should go through really good practices and decide which one is a little bit better. And this year we have uh, also a very uh, different people looking at uh, those practices, meaning they all have their different point of view and frame of reference. And that is Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development, Ministry of Youth and Sports, Qualification Agency, uh, and very famous NGO from Serbia, Belgrade Open School, and also our dear colleagues from uh, your guidance center, uh, Croatia and Montenegro. And uh, what we want to achieve is actually to give people uh, some sort of uh, recognition and to help them to stay motivated, to give them the message that someone is caring about their work and somebody is respecting their work. 
and uh, why we all have seen uh, these beautiful testimonials from uh, clients in the previous presentation. What is also more important to have in mind is to have our colleagues that will say, okay, you are doing a good job. This is a really, really good idea that you have. And because of that, every, every year commission decides to do uh, something more than award. So meaningly, meaning that uh, we have three awards there, you know, like the uh, stars, the main thing. And also we have uh, different practices that are recognized because of some part of their quality. And they got acknowledgement. This year we have four practices that got acknowledgement. And also we like to publicly comment for practices, meaning that we uh, publicly say you did a good work regarding this or that aspect of your service. And uh, this year uh, we have public comment for uh, different uh, high school, that is economic school uh, from one small city in Serbia. They had a great idea to uh, talk to students about mobility during education. We have one faculty that um, have established career management uh, subject in their every in their curricula. Also, different uh, career guidance activities in high school within the curricula, so within the regular classes. And uh, one project that really showed a beautiful example of under understanding the needs of their target group, which was the. Uh, Roma students from agriculture high school in uh, one really, really small city uh, in Serbia. Uh, they had uh, they had one part of their practice that was really exceptional. And a little bit further on the scale, we have acknowledgements. And they got, uh, they also went to a different activities in different cities. Uh, one is um, how to use uh, different ICT tools, and we have example from technical school in Bor how they did uh, online escape game uh, that has uh, career guidance as a topic. Uh, we have one uh, handbook for business communication from medical school, also from one small city in Serbia. Uh, they give written material to their students how to deal with business communication. And we have a example of adjustment to this uh, COVID crisis from Career Guidance and Counseling Center from University of Kragujevac. And one really uh, nice example of how we can use materials that we already have and adjust that to the needs of our students that was actually done by uh, Seven Grammar School from Belgrade. And this year's awards, they're award is uh, quite symbolical. This is the example, the photo of the um, actual award that, our, um, that they uh, receive. And these uh, beautiful statues went this year to the project Education to Employment. They got the first award for their really outstanding long, long year service and uh, uh, establishing different materials and services for uh, working with youth people. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that you will be able to hear more about it in our following publications regarding the, regarding the national awards. Second award went to Center for Career Development and Student Counseling of the University of Belgrade. Uh, they did a series of workshops for students uh, it's called to Choose and Taste It. Uh, they offered uh, examples from different practices, some different, um, uh, I would say, exercises for students so they can uh, actually have a taste of how it looks like to do certain occupation. And third prize went to High School for Economics and Trades. Uh, together, this school with uh, NGOs from the local, uh, they uh, planned and has executed one uh, project for girls from rural areas. So it was something that was uh, for students for, of uh, this school and some others where they had opportunity to um, think about their uh, professional development and their career development. So this is what we have from Serbia this year. Um, we did, we haven't uh, mentioned, but um, 
also uh, during the on Euro guidance website you can find a different collection from the good practices from previous years so you can see who was uh, the best among the best uh, in the past years and uh, we are definitely hoping that we will have something like that for this year as well so there will be opportunity to read more about those practices over there uh, this is all from me at this moment um, if you have any any question regarding it do you, if you want me to uh, share maybe some uh, links or um, details about it feel free to feel free to ask okay thank you very much so i uh, you you can see that in serbia it was like uh, overview of these practices from slovakia it was one example from national efforts and now we can move to hungary or latvia uh, i maybe i will start with uh, latvia is if in inta is here inta yes she's uh, or he <laughs> sorry <laughs> or he or she hello <laughs> And I cannot hear you. I, uh, it's okay with your sound. Not yet. No sound, no sound. Okay. So what is the problem? Yes, yes, you can. Okay. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. finally, yes. Okay. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, she is Inta. Hello. <laughs> she is Inta. <laughs> yes, I'm Inta from Latvia and uh, hello everyone. And I'm happy to take part in this so interesting conference. Uh, many thanks dear our organizers. And I have been working as a career counselor and students, parents and teachers, educator and coach. And I'd like to show some examples from my career educational experience, which is included in my books of the last two years, which you can see in this slide. Um, first book is uh, Parental Support Their Kids on successful uh, career making and second bo book is about competency-based career education and down is uh, career guidance for use with social uh, risk uh, status um, um, i have experience in creating methodological materials for these target groups i lead master class on educational opportunities in schools process. And in my books, uh, I have described these methods, which I have used in practice. And in my opinion, effective method is visualization. I offer clients, students, parents, or teachers to choose association picture and comment it. We discuss about question uh, what is career and uh, that's interesting how youngsters or adults see career what is person's point of view opinion mind ideas expectations and in self assessment i like to use holland theory uh, connected with association cards in determination type in person suitability to certain professional field. And I offer uh, choose four or five cards and uh, arrange uh, to place first place and second place. And in this slide, we can see what is the same in these cards. On the left side, maybe artistic type by Holland on the uh, right side maybe enterprising type and in this slide we can uh, uh, see about values and maybe this is uh, social uh, 
type. <clears throat> one of uh, effective methods, in my, my, my opinion, is uh, career compass. And I do teachers' uh, trainings and pupils' masterclass. And we discuss about uh, questions, what can I, how can I do, about dreams, about passions. And uh, students like it. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, and uh, pupils create their own career story. They like it very well. Uh, because pupils are very creative and these stories are very, very interesting. interesting. And the uh, method helps to identify interests, passions, values, needs, and uh, interesting self-knowledge method is career collage. Students made uh, collage about these topics values, uh, passion, success, uh, goals, and uh, dreams. And you can see one of collages uh, when student step by step goes to um, her dream. And uh, this is collage about sports. Um, our uh, Olympic Games medalists, champions, uh, hockey teams, and uh, uh, basketball teams, um, dreams about sports, and in this collage we can see about uh, uh, cook, uh, cooking, and uh, people wrote that cooking uh, is an art, it's possible to cook uh, exotic dishes and to make vegetarian foods, and my suggestions for collage analysis is here. Um, other interesting self-knowledge method is self-portraits, creations. You can see my students' uh, self-portraits and uh, this may be world citizen. And this, uh, this student um, said free of mind. And this is uh, two faces, two realities. After that, together with students, we find out type of personality. And um, very interesting uh, is uh, discussions. And this method I use in uh, group counselings and results are very interesting. Uh, this method I call the cardiogram of life. And uh, in this picture, in the first picture, you can see uh, like as a medicine car cardiogram, you can see ups and downs. And after creating, students analyze in groups uh, their cardiograms. Uh, and this is very interesting too. Uh, this is picture is from my book, Competency-Based Education in Pedagogical Process. And uh, pupil on the way to dream, like as road traffic, and pupils can write uh, step by step in this map. And we analyze after that uh, this road. Uh, interesting is creating professionals houses. Uh, in first picture, you can see beauty care. In second, youth center and schools house. And uh, students see how many professions there are in each house. For example, in restaurant, not just, not, uh, just a chef and a waiter, but there are many other professions. Sometimes it's a surprise for them. Uh, for example, there are 26 professions in cinema house. And um, in self-knowledge, it's a possibility to make a daily schedule, daily routine uh, graphs and uh, uh, it's possible 
in schools learning process to learn planning skills. And these pictures, these pictures and graphs show daily routine. Uh, in these pictures, you can see um, percents about school, homework, uh, music, school, relax, sport, exercises, sleeping, and, and others. And uh, pictures and graphs show how meaningful time is used. And uh, uh, pupils have a uh, chance to change balance between activities, activities and to create new graphs or shadows. Um, it's possibility to realize self-knowledge uh, um, online and to do this method in uh, distanced learning and this picture yes it's uh, our reality in 21st century and um, my conclusion is that um, career education uh, is important uh, uh, part of schools uh, pedagogical process and important factor is choosing is choosing appropriate methods and uh, yes foundation of career uh, skills uh, we need to start on early age in primary school and continue in high school higher education and in lifelong learning and uh, Welcome to our beautiful country. You can see Riga and in second picture, you can see our national library. We call it, it uh, Light Palace. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks. It's all for me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can stop the share. Uh, share yes, the yes, 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 yes. Uh, so ah, we can see you now. Okay. <laughs> oh. And I would like to ask to last presentation from Hungary. <laughs> nice. Yes. Hello. Hello, Peter. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay. I, I try to share my presentation. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. Is it okay? Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Euroguidance, for the invitation to this conference. And thank you for the great presentations before me. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today. And it's my great pl uh, pleasure to present our career guidance practice to you, our mm -hmm. online career orientation day activities. My name is Tima Ivadi, and I am a work and career counseling uh, psychologist from Hungary and I work for Heves County Pedagogical Professional Service. So let me tell you a few words about uh, the pedagogical services in Hungary. I try to be uh, quick. As you can see, uh, okay, in Hungary, pedagogical professional services uh, have a sub-institution and unit in every county with unified leadership and professional protocols. We try to supplement the work and tasks of schools. As you can see, the duties are quite complex um, and um, including further study and career counseling. Now then let me show you our team. Here you can see our career counseling team, the qualified career guidance practitioners working at pedagogical services 
are coming from different uh, professional fields, from ped pedagogy, social work, or psychology. In principle, career orientation is part of the national core curriculum. Um, so the introduction of the world of labor and career guidance for primary and secondary school students are mainly the task of schools. And our aim is to support this career guidance uh, provision. In, li in line with the lifelong guidance approach, we assist students' career decisions made through their school years from the first to the tw uh, 12th grade. We hold individual and group uh, career counseling sessions, mainly in person in our offices or at schools of the county to provide substantial information on occupations and educational possibilities and institutions and to help pupils developing their career plans and in choosing appropriate educational paths suited, the, the, uh, suited to their personality, interests, skills, abilities and values. And of course, we intend to support the process of self-exploration, developing decision-making and career management skills, and an overall positive self-image. In spring, uh, the outbreak of the coronavirus disease changed our lives. Of course, schools were also affected and had to close entirely for moms in order to slow down the spread of the virus. So we couldn't go to schools, we couldn't meet the students, their parents, the teachers. So just like education, which transformed and using digital platforms moved online, we had to find alternative ways as well to maintain career guidance. As it was mentioned before in the previous presentations, we had to adapt to this new situation in a very short time. So how interesting that, um, we thought about what is possible, what is impossible. Um, okay, uh, so um, as, as it was mentioned earlier, we wanted to believe that nothing is impossible. So uh, here is an example how we reacted. We created an online career orientation day. In Hungary, an obligatory school career orientation day was introduced in 2017 for grades one to 12. And several good practices are known and shared among the schools how to make this day informative and useful and inspiring for students. For example, uh, parents are invited to talk about their occupations or other presentations are delivered by a range of speakers from different career fields or uh, factories, companies and career guidance events and exhibitions uh, are visited by the children on this special day. We often take part in these events, helping the work of the teachers, but this spring during the lockdown, none of these activities involving personal contact was possible. So that's why we, um, that's why in order to provide professional uh, support for schools in digital uh, work schedules, we created a collection of online and offline games and exercises for each grade of primary and secondary school students. We intended to enhance career and self-exploration with these uh, exercises and in also encourage family conversations about the world of work. We paid special attention to the needs and characteristics of the different age groups and aim to provide up-to-date information in an enjoyable and engaging manner. For lower, that's why for lower primary school grades, we used tales, children's stories to describe different jobs, and we added voice narrations to the PowerPoint presentations in case children couldn't read well. While with upper uh, grades, we tried more complex activities. We built digital escape rooms using Google Forms. We prepared different activity packs for different grades in different formats. First of all, the complete versions of the exercises were available in Google Forms and PowerPoint presentations. We made uh, animated PowerPoint presentations with live links and narration and digital escape rooms with live links in Google Forms. 
Uh, secondly, a shorter version, sh shorter versions in PDF files were available for the teachers in order to see the whole structure and the length of the games and the answers. And finally, we also created a short abstract of the activity packs with key for the students without reliable internet access and or technology. These simple and amusing printable um, worksheets can be used at school as well in different classes. And we started uh, to use various websites and learning platforms to create online games like crosswords, word search puzzles, matching exercises and quizzes. Here you can see the opening slides of the presentations for the first, the second, the third and the fourth grades. And here is an example of the presentations for the lower grades, Little Mimi Choosing a Profession. It is a short story for a little, uh, of a little rabbit exploring the world of occupations with children's rhymes, online puzzles, finding the pairs and memory games. Um, it takes about 45 minutes to read and listen to the story and do some online games like this one. As you can see, the live link directed the kids to learning apps where they could uh, find this matching game. They had to find the tools for the different jobs. But there are uh, also some extra offline activities that children could do at home with their parents. And if they tried uh, these exercises, the whole activity could take four or uh, three or four hours. And here you can see the opening pages and the instructions of the activities for the fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth grades. And uh, let me show you an example created for eighth graders. Career Castle, that's the uh, title of this digital escape room game. Uh, it is a fun online game in which players are trapped in an old castle and try to escape. In each room, they must complete a task in order to gain passwords to open digital locks. Uh, in the next room, they have to solve another puzzle for the next code and so on. To be able to leave the castle, they have to put all these words together to complete a quote from a famous person. In this case, uh, it was from Einstein. I have no special talent. I'm only passionately curious. Um, and with this one, they could get out of the, the, the castle. Uh, on this slide, you can see the first room, for example. When you, we enter, we enter the hall. It's called the Hall of Ancestors. On the walls, you can see several old pictures and paintings of people who lived in the castle doing all sorts of jobs. Now they could uh, click on the live link and it directed uh, them to a word war game, a word search uh, exercise uh, where they could find different occupations. They had to find all of them quickly within two minutes. Um, and uh, there was a password word also uh, hidden in this game and uh, they could open the next uh, door with that. These online games with the codes give information about uh, the education system, occupations, labor market, and students can find uh, surprising facts about the career paths of famous people as well, for example. And the whole activity can be completed within 45 minutes. However, in each room, there is an optional extra offline activity uh, that helps uh, self-exploration. Uh, with this, the whole game can take three or four hours. For example, in this first room in the Hall of Ancestors, students are encouraged to talk to one of their own relatives whose profession they find interesting, exciting, and they can make an interview with this person about his or her career path. Students do not need to complete these exercises in, in order to escape, but if they try, to, and try them, they actually refurnish or redecorate the castle with their own ideas. So in the end, they can say, this is my career castle. For lower and upper elementary classes, besides these activity uh, packs, we also offer the video game, and Kitty Mayoros is going to describe these games. 
Uh, but before I give the floor to Kitty, just let me say a few words about the example of the secondary school for secondary school students. For them, we prepared a PowerPoint presentation uh, with live links and games and a list of useful websites to provide re relevant information on higher education, university admission requirements and application procedures. But Kitty, then, could you please describe the games? Good afternoon. My name is uh, Kitty Majoros, and I'm studying social pedagogy at Esterházy Káro University. I and my uh, teacher, Titan Eresó Györgyi, uh, wanted to create something unique and exciting career-oriented video game for the digital education system. Uh, we made a video game with two optional levels. One of is done for uh, lower classes and one of is uh, for the upper classes. This uh, game can be used on laptop or desktop computer because protagonist control or of case are required. In connection with the task, uh, the primary school age group can get closer to content and characteristic of uh, professions. Uh, for example, activity, uh, required education, risk and danger, working conditions. Uh, while you are playing, you need to be resourceful and creative because it's not enough to know the right answer. You also need to watch the introductions and that connects uh, with the game. Besides the video game, expands the knowledge is uh, it has also a skill building effect because the characters uh, requires eye hand conditions, quick reflex and skills. Both adventure games are uh, made on game broad and uh, consist five tracks that you can explore with the characters. The only difference is the difficulty uh, level between the two video games. Uh, in short, that's all I want to say. Thanks for the attention. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty. And just a few more words about the responses, because of course we asked the pupils and teachers to share their opinions um, and ideas about the activities. And uh, almost 60% uh, of the participants gave feedback. Uh, we found that most students, 39%, uh, use laptops to do the activities, 25% uh, use smartphones, 19% use PCs, and 46% uh, of the students tried some of the uh, extra offline uh, activities as well. Okay, and... Um, 81% of the students uh, like the activities and would like to play similar career orientation games in the future as well. And as for the teachers, 36% of the teachers who responded found the activities interesting and 63% really found it really interesting. Um, and 88% would like to use similar games in the future. So um, I hope you also liked the games and found this presentation useful as well. Here you can see um, our website and address in case you would like to contact us. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. And uh, if you can stop the sharing, it's nice to see your face now. Okay, so we are in the end of the session.